Okay. The, the first thing that's kind of important is, obviously, guys, if we're finding the zeros, we want the set as equal to 0, right? So we want to at least represent the definition of the zeros. And now we got to think, all right, so a couple things. I got to find the zeros, and I got to write the linear factorization. So linear factorization is rewriting something as a product. Now, the, the issue here is this is, not, this is not a product right now. This is actually, we have two terms separated by subtraction, right? So we actually have two expressions here, right? Two terms separated by an exp a subtraction symbol. So what I do is I think, well, did I, have we, let me think of something maybe that's factorable like this. What if I did, you know, let me go back to my algebra 2 class. Let me just kind of remind myself on factoring. So if I had something like um, 3x squared minus 3, and we said, hey, factor that. And you'd say, well, they have a 3 in common, right? And then obviously we could factor this down further, right? But for right now, I'm not going to go to that step. So if we're, one of the common factoring techniques is looking for common factors, right? In this case, it was a 3. And that's relatively easy to see. So then I say, well, then what if I did x plus 3? times x squared minus x plus 3. Now, what do these have in common? X plus three. The x plus 3. Can I factor out the x plus 3 just like I factor out the 3? Are we breaking any rules, any laws anybody know of? I'm not aware of any. It's the same process. Now, some of you might be confused because instead of having the x plus 3 or the 3 in front, we have an expression after it. But again, guys, does it matter if it's 3 times 4 or 4 times 3? No, right? Order doesn't matter. What do these two quantities, what do they share? An x plus 2. So let's factor that out. So I have 0 equals x plus 2 times. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing here. Because we recognize that when we factor out a 3, we're left with a 1 here, right? And again, guys, you're dividing, right? Factoring out is like dividing. When you factor out a 3, you're really dividing a negative 3 by 3. That gives you a 1. So what happens when we divide out an x plus 2 from the negative x plus 2? What is left over? This negative 1 that's right there, right? There's a coefficient negative 1 there. So we can say that's going to be minus 1. Have I now rewritten my function as a product? Yes, I factored, right? And now I just need to do a linear factorization. I just need to write this as a product of few factors. And boom, OK. I can do the zeros now. This is easy. Well, let's write this. Zeros are negative 2, plus or minus 1, all with a multiplicity equal to 1. Okay. The linear factorization, again, is x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Right? So the, the, um, the temptation, Chloe, right, 